Hello and welcome to the Deform Getting Started video. Assuming you have everything installed correctly, uh, we can get started by selecting a mesh in your scene that you want to deform. So I'm just going to use this cube. If I show the shaded wireframe, you can see it's got some extra subdivisions for a smoother uh, shape. Um, so the first thing you need to know is every mesh you want to deform has to have a deformable component. Um, so I'll add that and explain a little bit more about it once I've added it. Um, so you can just go to add component and deformable and just like that, uh, it's, it's deformable, it's ready to go. Um, or you can go to the deform creator window, which I'm going to use because uh, it makes it a little easier to create deformables and add deformers. Um, so I'm just gonna, with it selected, if I click create deformable, it, the same thing happened, it's deformable now. Um, so, this deformable is just a little manager. This is where you can change settings, um, and, but most importantly, this is where you say what deformers you want to be applied to the mesh. Um, so, let's just deform it. Uh, I'm gonna add a twist deformer, so with it selected, I'm just gonna click twist, and it'll get automatically added, and a new game object will be created with the twist deformer component. Um, so, deform, one of the most important things you can take away from it is that it operates in world space. So almost every deformer has a property called, or a variable called axis. Um, and whatever you have here is the transform that the calculations will be relative to. Um, so that's kind of, what does that even mean, right? Um, well, I'll just, instead of explaining, I'll show you. So right now it's using itself, and that's what most deformers are gonna do. They all, they, by default, use themselves as their axis, which you're rarely going to change. But so let, let's just move. Let's move this transform uh, after I add a twist. So I'm going to add a twist. Cool, awesome. It works. Um, so now, if I move it, you'll see the twist. Like I said, is relative to the transform. Um, and again, this applies to almost every deformer. Um, so I could even I could scale it. I could rotate it, and you see uh, the effect is relative to its uh, transform and it has to have it has to have an axis so I'll click it and here I don't know if you can hear but I'm hitting delete and it's staying there because it has to have something to be relative to right um, so I think most people's intuition might be to um, I'll delete it really quick to add it here just as a component and then drag it in here but you have to remember that it's relative to here I'll go to rotate uh, it's relative to its axis and if its axis is itself uh, then its axis is the same as the mesh's axis, the mesh's transform. So now if I rotate it, you're just rotating both, um, which is fine if you're okay with this, with what you have right now. But if as soon as you want to rotate um, a deformer, you have to use a different axis. Now you could of course always say, I'll just create an empty object called, um, I'll just call it twist axis, and then I'll assign it right here. So now instead of using itself, I'm overriding it with a different axis and now I can rotate this and you see uh, the axis is different I can still scale it all this stuff um, so you can have it on the same object and still get the same um, I guess level of control but in general it's much easier to just create it just create it on a separate game object um, and that's what the creator window will do automatically for you um, so here let's add a I'll add a twirl deformer, so I just click, and uh, it gets added. I can even select it here in the list, and it'll give a little preview, um, and it'll draw the scene handle, so I can do this, and then uh, remember, I'm, I'm moving here, and I'm moving the mesh. The twirl deformer is a child of the mesh, so it's getting moved with it. If I want to move the effect, I have to actually select this deformer, and then I can move it. So that's super cool. Um, so remember that. Remember that Deformers, almost all of them, are relative to their axis property. They'll all have something, they'll, they'll almost all have a property called axis or something along those lines. Um, so the next thing you need to remember is that because it's in world space, the effect will be seamless across separate meshes. So that's another thing that's kind of hard. Like, what, what does that even mean? Uh, well, again, I'll just show you. Um, so I'm going to unparent this twirl and select this cube. So this cube is using the twirl deformer, and if I just duplicate it and move it forward and maybe to the left, and here I'll just make a little checkerboard, you see that all of these different meshes 
are using the same twirl deformer. So because it's in world space, multiple meshes can share the same twirl deformer and have a seamless effect. So if I grab this twirl deformer and move it around, you see it just works just like that. Because it's in world space, um, you don't have to worry about syncing multiple deformers um, across multiple meshes. So like say, say you have uh, like this boulder that's made up of three meshes and you want to add noise to it for some reason. Um, you don't have to select all of them and add a noise deformer to each of them individually. Uh, you just create the noise deformer once and then apply it to all of them separately. So they'll each point, they'll each, each of their deformers lists will have a reference to that single noise deformer. Um, so, you know, that's cool. Uh, and that, that's just important to remember. Um, it, that might not be intuitive at first, but it's pretty freaking powerful once you get the hang of it. Um, so yeah, those, those are the basics. Just remember, um, they operate, deformers operate relative to their axis. And because of that, they can be shared across multiple meshes. Um, that's the takeaway. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy using deform and I'll see you later.